What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode with my pal Alex and Feisty Pants. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Alex's Toy Show. It's Q and A, one hundred and twenty-one. I've done one hundred and twenty-one of these. I have. I know. I say it every week. It's just shocking. I just. Why is it so bright? Jose Mom just wants to know what was your first Transformer collectible. Mine personally. Now, this goes back to 1984 when the series was new, and you didn't know who was what, and you just you went to Toys R Us, or to Child World, or to Kitty Toys, Kitty Lionel Kitty City, and you you know it was just like the whole aisle was just Transformers, and we're like, oh, I just grabbed the coolest one I saw. Turns out, uh, it was it was Bumblebee. But it wasn't yellow, it was red. And I, I didn't know, you know, you saw the cartoon, it was the coolest thing you ever saw. You went to the store right after the cartoon. How do you learn everybody's name in the first episode? You don't, nobody pays attention. Not, well, I mean, these days, everybody's got ADHD and they just know shit, like everything. Back in the day, nobody paid attention. You had to, you had to repeat itself, you know, like a hundred times before you, before you learned anything. Anyway, it was the red Bumblebee, and uh, it turns out years later, you know, looking back, it's like, oh, Bumblebee was issued in yellow. It was issued in a rare red, and then there was like another yellow version that was a mix of like Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee parts because they were very similar um, uh, robots. And uh, my my very first Transformer turned out to be a collectible known as the Red Bumblebee. Couldn't believe it. Um, Teresa, my Yankee buddy, wants to know if I'm happy about Goldberg coming back, she asked me the other day. And and here's the thing. Uh, I, I, it doesn't phase me the least um, that he's coming back. I, You know, when WWE and they decided to do the draft, I'll link you the, my, my opinion of the draft. Because <laughs> that's great. Um, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to bring back all the oldest people ever. I'm like... I personally don't want to see all the oldest people ever. I want to see you put all these new people over and get them into the spotlight. So what do they do? Oh, they find another opponent for Brock Lesnar, and they make it Goldberg. Now, here's Brock Lesnar, right? Brock Lesnar, he's the beast. He's your boy. At your ball or at your boy, he's the beast. Um, he's wrecking people, right? What has Goldberg done in the past 20 years? He's done nothing that I know of, that anyone else has known of. So they, you know, so they make him a downloadable character, you know, in WWE 2K17 about how good he was 20 years ago or however the hell long it was. What's he been doing? He's an old man now to me. That's all he is. He's going to get in the ring with Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar's going to kill him. So no, I'm not particularly thrilled. Uh, and that's why. Uh, Teresa also wants to know, how do you play that game without Wi-Fi? She's talking about Pokemon Go. You don't need Wi-Fi if you have a data plan. I happen to have a data plan on my cell phone, and um, that's how I play it. Data plan. And it doesn't actually eat up that much data. It uh, kills your battery. That it does for sure. Hot Rod 271 for the win says, Man, this game is addicting. What's the highest level in the game? Uh, you're also talking about Pokemon Go. And yes, yes, it is addicting. You get up to level 40 so far. That's about it. Uh, there's a ton of experience points in between those levels when you get up into 30s. Oh, Brandon Gretemy wants to know why did the guy burn the 50 Andy Van Slyke cards? I don't get it. I don't get it. The TV show of you and Grimm was cool. Okay, it was cool. However, what was not cool was how fake they made it to be. We had our collections. I had my cards. Grimm had his action figures. They turned our awesome collections and how cool we showed off everything and how I told everybody about like this set of cards and this poster and these balls, autograph balls, balls. Um, and Grimm is like, you look at these figures and these figures and these figures, and they turned our awesome collections into obsessions. And they brought in these fake pee psychiatrists to, you know, to kind of talk to us like, you need to let go of your collection. I'm not attached to my collection. It's been for sale for like as long as I know. Um, so the reason why he had me burn those 50 cards was to show it was a sign of, um, it was a sign of trust to say that I'm not attached to these cards. He actually wanted me to... There was a lot they cut out because they were going to do an hour episode on everybody. But when they it turned, everybody else backed out and it turned out to just be me and Grim, they did a they did a half hour each for us. And they cut a lot out, a lot of content, which probably would have made the episodes funnier. Um, but what they did was he asked me first if I could burn my one of one. You know, it's like the only one I have, that card. 
And I'm like, no way. I said, when I sell this collection, I'm going to need that to be an anchor in the collection. He's like, oh, well, you got to burn something. I'm like, how about I burn your ass? <laughs> right? But no, so I said, well, I, I got these 89 Donner's cards that I have in the thousands. I actually have like over a thousand of these particular cards that I burned. I said, I'm not going to miss 50 of them. So I grabbed a stack. It might have been, you know, more than 50. I don't know. Um, and we burned them. Uh, Grim didn't do a similar thing like that. Uh, Grim, Grim was more into, Grim had a better psychiatrist. They were different, uh, different guys. And, um, he, all he did was just roast this guy like all day long. Like they didn't even, they cut out so many of the jokes. Like I, I saw, like I saw like, like all the jokes <laughs> that he, that he told that day. And uh, like the, the roast was just, it was well done. But, uh, but yeah. And Brandon's other question. Uh, you, if you and Feisty Pants could go anywhere in your lifetime, where would you go and what would you be doing? I don't know. He's, uh, like me, I have a list of, uh, you know, places I want to visit. Just to, just to visit, you know, travel the world a little. Everybody has that when you, you know, when you've lived your life and you're like, ah, oh, what else is out there, you know? I want to see the world. And, um, yeah, I'm still living my life. Don't get me wrong. I just, you know for when I'm done, <laughs> for when Feisty Pants is older and on his way to college, maybe, and I, I have some free time on my hands, I'll go, go travel the world, uh, but, you know, he's he's a boy, he doesn't know where, where he wants to go, he wants to go to the beach, he wants to go to Ocean City and play Pokemon, I'm, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, that's, that's where he wants, he wants to go to FDR, um, it's uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt Park out near Philly, he wants to go to Washington Square in Philly. And catch Pokemon. That's what he wants to do. I, I don't have a legit answer for that one. Sorry, man. All right, we're getting late in the afternoon here. If uh, David Griffin says, which Halloween horror movies do you like to watch often? Well, I haven't seen uh, the new Ghostbusters where, with all the girls cast. Uh, I want to see that this year. But um, Scream with uh, Nev Campbell, right? I want to say that's Nev Campbell or with Jennifer Love Hewitt. No, Jennifer Love Hewitt was, uh, I know what you did last summer, which was also good, but um, the first scream where, where the kid turned out to be the two killers, and um, you know the one kid is throwing the party, and the other guy is like, I'm going to go get more beer out of the garage, he says, I'll be right back. That's, that's, that's a killer movie for me. I, was, I enjoyed that one. Um, Michael Myers, classic, classic Halloween movies right there with Jamie Lee Curtis. I mean, that was some scary shit. If you guys haven't seen... Phantasm, that's what I'm thinking of. It's called Phantasm. They're remastering Phantasm. You guys need to watch that. Those are some good movies. Uh, your thoughts on H Hideo Itami getting injured again? Oh, well. Uh, your thoughts on a female YouTuber named Jenna Marbleys? Jenna is hysterical, but I can only take her in small parts because she's got that, you know, she's playing right into that, like, annoying, you know, millennial complainer type of role it's it's funny to listen to but i can't listen to her like all day long uh i haven't watched her in a long time i hope she hasn't changed her gimmick because it was great uh which candy do you hate the most candy corns i'm not a fan out of all the chocolate and candy you know both sides i'm not a fan of of that um i got pokemon go going here and i heard something spawn and there's like nothing there uh nothing great which uh which cruiserweights do you like so far well i didn't actually know their names up until like a couple of weeks ago as they've been appearing on raw and i actually like this tj perkins guy i think he's the best see it's getting super dark now can we turn this up a little is there a lighting guy shit it's so bright what the frig uh your thoughts on the gameplay of wwe 2k17 if i owned it i would totally tell you all about it but i don't have it um, do you ever see Luis Gonzalez in the Hall of Fame by 2020? Luis Gonzalez was an outfielder in Major League Baseball. I do not think he's Hall of Fame material. You never know. Uh, he did have a decent career. He didn't have a great career. But I don't think so. Uh, what do you think of the Spirit Squad? I think it was a clever idea. It was a group of guys. They went under a name. Kind of like the NWO, the Nexus. Um... The Nexus after the Nexus, <laughs> whatever the fuck that was, uh, the, the the Wyatt family, it was just a group of guys. They stuck together and they took over the world. Uh, they were just cheerleaders. <laughs> whatever works, man. Uh, let's see, the Spirit Squad. What do you think of the heel fan sending dead animals to Grimm and fan mail? That was totally disgusting, and I actually did not remember that. 
Um, I had to actually ask Grim. I'm like, somebody sent you dead animals in fan mail? Had I been there, I would have called the cops. And I would have had the authorities out to this motherfucker's house. Because he can't do that kind of crap in fan mail. You can't put that stuff in the mail. That's against the law. And therefore, you would be arrested. I'm talking to you, you dirty bastard heel fan. Uh, which dream match do you want to see Bailey in and why? Um... Bailey is like brand new. She hasn't even had like a dream opponent yet, let alone a dream match. So uh, I guess we'll see. Um, which team do you see winning second Dusty Rhodes Classic at NXT? You know, I don't know. That's really up in the air. It could really be like anybody. Um, I'm looking forward to watching it though. And do you see the WWE US and IC title design being changed like the like the Raw and SmackDown titles? Um, I don't think so, or else they would have done it already. But hey, you never know. They might change their mind. All right, that is all for Q&A this week. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. I answer them every week on Q&A, every Sunday, and that's how it works. Easy peasy. Last minute question, Daniel Parker wants to know what I like to do. What I like to do, that's it. <laughs> when... What if I had my choice? I would uh, I would not have to go to work. I would work from home, something nice and easy, and I could spend all my time with feisty pants. Um, that that is what I like to do. When when we're hanging out together, that's that's peak performance, prime time. I don't know what the right word is, but spending time with feisty pants. That's what I love to do. Uh, I all I wanted out of life was kids, and uh, I got one fantastic little man.